Mysteries at Cliff Palace. Cast of characters. Narrator, Reuben, Rosa, Mom, Dad, Ranger Jenkins. Narrator. Ten-year-old Reuben, his older sister Rosa, and their parents are visiting Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. They're with a group waiting for a ranger-guided tour of the cliff dwellings. Reuben. Wow, this is going to be great. I'm going to solve one of the great mysteries of ancient North America with the help of my trusty notebook. Mom, just look how many dwellings are built into the cliff alcove down there. Reuben, all those walls and towers inside the ledge are really cool. Mom, this was all built by the ancestral Puebloan people. Dad, that's right. These dwellings have been here for about 800 years. Reuben, I can't wait to see the Cliff Palace up close. I'm sure I can find some clues to the mystery of why the people all disappeared. Rosa, right, Reuben. You can't even keep track of your lucky pen, so how can you solve a real mystery? Reuben, don't remind me, Rosa. I looked all over the car for it. Dad, hey, Reuben, here comes the ranger. Mom, I bet she knows a lot about the Puebloan mystery. Narrator. Ranger Jenkins arrives and introduces herself. Ranger Jenkins. Gather round, everyone. We'll be descending 100 feet into the canyon. It's quite a trek, so be prepared. Reuben. Aren't there five, eight-foot ladders to climb? Ranger Jenkins. It's challenging, but you can do it. Rosa to Reuben. I hope I can. It's so hot. Reuben. I'll push you along if you need it. Just promise you'll tell me if you find any clues to the mystery. Dad. Rosa, didn't you have a question for Ranger Jenkins? Rosa. Yes. Why is this park named Mesa Verde? Doesn't that mean green table in Spanish? Ranger Jenkins. Exactly. You see these huge flat hills all around us? They're sometimes called plateaus, but they're as flat as tabletops, so they're also called mesas. And verde just refers to all the green plants and trees growing here. Narrator. Reuben waves his hand urgently. Reuben. I've been reading a lot about the ancestral Puebloans who built these cities like Cliff Palace. I read that at some time they just left here and I'm trying to figure out why. Ranger Jenkins. Great question, Reuben. Historians have been puzzling over this mystery for a long time. I'd like to hear your ideas. Reuben, well, I'm not sure, but Rosa, what I want to know is how they built those dwellings. Ranger Jenkins, we'll talk a bit about that during the tour, Rosa, okay? Did everyone see the alcoves in the canyon walls? These cliffs are made of sandstone and shale, and sandstone is soft. It easily breaks and crumbles away. Over time, that breaking and crumbling carved the alcoves out of the rock. Dad, so when did the ancestral Puebloans start living here? Ranger Jenkins. They came to this area around 600 CE, but it wasn't until around 1200 that they built these dwellings in the cliffs. Let's go take a closer look at their handiwork. Watch where you're walking, everyone. The steps down are really rough and uneven. Narrator. Reuben doesn't notice he's dropped his notebook on the steps. His mother hands it to him and then goes on ahead to take pictures. Dad. How about that pen you were missing, Reuben? Did you find it yet? Reuben. I don't know where it went, Dad. It's not in any of my pockets. Rosa. See, I told you. How can he solve an ancient mystery? He can't even solve the mystery of his missing stuff. Reuben. Dad, tell Rosa to stop teasing. In fact, I bet she has my pen. Rosa, I do not. Dad, what does it look like? Reuben, it has a digital thermometer on it so I can tell the temperature. I always use it when I take tests. Ranger Jenkins, listen up everyone. This round pit in front of us is called a kiva. A kiva is a ceremonial room. The ancestral Puebloans built kivas for special religious ceremonies. If you look over there, you can see where the people climbed up the cliffs to the top of the Mesa farm. And of course, this is Cliff Palace. 
Cliff Palace has 23 kivas and 150 rooms, which housed about 100 people, we think. Reuben, man, look at all these cliff dwellings. Dad, and those towers. Just think of the work that went into building all this. Reuben, yeah, but the people only lived here for around 75 to 100 years. Why would they leave? Rosa, maybe they were thirsty like me. It is so hot here, and I already drank all my water. Reuben, hey, you could be right, Rosa. There was a drought here sometime, wasn't there? Ranger Jenkins, yes, there was. The drought began in 1276 and may have lasted for 20 years. A lot of people think that ancestral Puebloans left after their crops died and they didn't have enough food. On the other hand, the people had survived droughts in the past. They stored food to prepare for hard times. Why would this drought drive them away if they had survived others? Reuben, don't some people think maybe a war forced them to leave? Roger, Ranger Jenkins, right, there may have been a war. It might have started with one group raiding another for food. Reuben, or maybe the different groups fought for each other's land to get the best places to grow crops and find water. Narrator. After discussing their ideas with Ranger Jenkins, Reuben decides to look for clues. Mom. Reuben, did you see where Rosa went? Reuben. Mom, all these dwellings are made of sandstone bricks. The Puebloans made them one by one, by hand. So why leave after all that work? Dad. It's great that you're keeping notes on this mystery, Reuben, but you didn't see Rosa wander off? Reuben, wait, my notebook. Dad, I lost it again. Mom, we'll look for your notebook, Reuben, once we find Rosa. Dad, I'll go see if she's with that group over there. Ranger Jenkins, it's almost time to go. Take a few more minutes to look around, and then we'll climb those ladders up the cliff. Mom, Quick, let's check all around the dwellings. Narrator. Reuben looks around. He finds Rosa sitting in the shade of a rock wall near one of the Cliff Palace dwellings. Reuben. What are you doing way over here, Rosa? Rosa. Looking for shade. I was really hot and tired. I just needed to get out of the sun. Reuben. You should have told Mom where you were going. Rosa. I know. I was going to sit here for a minute, but then I started looking at these cool bricks, and I started thinking how terrible it must have been to have no water here. Reuben. That could be why the ancestral Puebloans left, even though they worked so hard to build this city. Rosa. So you haven't found out the reason for sure? Now I'm really wondering about it, too. Reuben. No. And my notebook's lost again. Rosa. Here it is. You left it by a tower, so I picked it up for you. Reuben. Great. Do you have my pen, too? Rosa. I promise I do not have your pen, Reuben. I wish I did. Then I could see exactly how hot it is out here. But being here makes me want to help solve this mystery. Reuben. Good. We'd better get back. It's almost time to go. Narrator. Rosa and Reuben return to the group. Their parents are happy to see Rosa safe. The tour is about to end. Ranger Jenkins. So, Reuben, before we go, have you solved the mystery of the ancestral Puebloans? Reuben. Nope, but at least I have a few theories. Mom. Okay, I'm ready to climb this ladder. Reuben. Wait, hold on, Mom. What's that sticking out of your back pocket? Rosa. Oh my gosh! Reuben. Looks like a digital thermometer. It's my lucky pen. Mom, goodness, this thing? I found it on the ground near our car after we got here. I had no idea it was yours, Reuben. Here you go. Dad, well, we solved the mysteries of the lost Rosa, the lost notebook, and the lost pen today. Not bad for one day's work. Reuben, yeah, and now that I have my lucky pen back, I might solve the ancestral Puebloans mystery in a few years. Ranger Jenkins, with some good research, you just might. Now everybody, up we go.